I told y'all when that fool wore his little White Lives Matter shirt uh, with that other dumbass Candace Owens, I wasn't wasting my time dealing with those fools. Uh, but I, I, I told y'all what happens when you give folk attention. So Kanye West goes on Fox News, uh, sits down with Tucker Carlson, and oh my Lord, the folk at Fox News just praised him up and down Call this man, oh, how he was a genius and incredible. If y'all want to see uh, white love, y'all want to see Kanye West's white love? Remember Charlemagne said Kanye's whole focus is he desperately seeks white validation? Ooh, the white nationals at Fox News gave him all the white validation he needed. This, this is a compilation put together by Media Matters. I was blown away by Kanye West. I really was. It was fascinating. This was an unvarnished, authentic. We've rarely heard a man speak so honestly and so movingly about what he believes. Kanye West uh, is, is, is wise, yeah. uh, he's, he's unique, and uh, certainly he's fearless. He's a very important voice. There's such authenticity to that that it just makes me want to hear more. Speaking truth to power, calling things out, and Kanye West does that. He speaks truth to power. He is one smart guy. Is Kanye trying to be a force for good? Absolutely. Yeah, he is. Very special intellectual renaissance. When you consider like people like Tucker or uh, Kanye. Kanye's genius. I'm gonna make an analogy, Kunta Kente and Roots. He, they got him out on the tree and they're whipping him. What's your name? And they want him to say left wing liberal. Kanye West refuses to live in that box. I mean, you can't help but like him because he is not apologetic. Yeah. Have I reached Alex Jones territory yet? No, I think uh, you're telling the truth. Okay. <laughs> And that's okay if you do. I, I, I think he's dead on on this one. I know for me, it just made me think, man, we can reach so many more people with this uh, powerful movement that believes in freedom. I know that what I'm listening to is unique and interesting. If Kanye West believes it, imagine how many more people out there maybe aren't talking about it, but would like to. Uh, Ye West threatening to go to war with Jewish people on Twitter. He appears to imply Diddy a fellow rapper, was controlled by the Jews on Instagram. Hmm. Boy, ain't that one pretty funny. Boy, y y y did y'all just hear how these folks just lost their minds? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, Kanye is like black Jesus to them. Uh, I mean, they, they, they just, just were beside themselves for the praise and love of Lil Kanye. This is when things change, y'all. It was when Kanye decided uh, to drop this tweet here. Remember, he was attacking Diddy uh, back and forth, and Diddy fired back at him. So Kanye went ahead and decided to drop this tweet here. This is where things change. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. The funny thing is, I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Well, that didn't sit too well. The folks at Instagram, the folks at Twitter. Uh, so he got thrown in Instagram and Twitter jail. Uh, but the thing, the thing that for me uh, is, is just hilarious um, is uh, to watch how uh, these folks uh, are just uh, running and, um, and, and, and running and, and backtracking and, and, and how they are just uh, doing all they can. And, you know, and, and, and what really got me in that video, uh, listen, as I heard more of Kanye, I wanted to hear more. Will Kane. Now, y'all, I, 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 I used to often debate Will Kane when we were uh, at CNN. And, and Will, a nice guy, but he a lightweight. He a lightweight. I used to destroy his ass at every turn. I mean, he, I mean, every time he would say something, I mean, he, he's from Texas, University of Texas, so his football team sucks. I always blew him up about that. But also, I always destroyed his arguments. And you saw that every time Kanye talks, uh, I want to hear from him. And then, of course, you saw in there uh, Joe Concha, uh, who is the so-called media critic for The Hill uh, and Fox News. He's gone also uh, far right wing. And I done destroyed that fool on so many occasions. It's utterly ridiculous. And he was, again, praising the brilliance of Kanye. See, this is where all y'all white folks at Fox News and, of course, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that utterly fool Jason Whitlock, 
This is what happens when you decide to side with a fool. You side with a fool, a fool will make your ass look real stupid. And that's exactly what happened here. Uh, we are dealing with uh, somebody deranged. And, and, and just understand, it's all about, I told y'all, it's about the attention. It's about what they do. And then, you know, then you got that really other tired, trifling uh, fool, Candace Owens. If y'all want to hear something stupid, l l listen to this fool right here. Try to defend Kanye uh, with, with her. Now, I'm not going to play all of it because y'all know uh, she, she ain't the brightest bulb in a dark room. I mean, if y'all truly want, if there's a match made in heaven, is Candace Owens dating Jason Whitlock? I mean, they, those two can go to the Clarence Thomas prom at any time. But, but just li listen to this fool. That was the tweet. And people subsequently demanded that the tweet be taken down for anti-Semitism. Now, if you are an honest person, you did not think this tweet was anti-Semitic. You did not think that he wrote this tweet because he hates or wants to genocide Jewish people. This does not represent the beginning of the Holocaust. That's if you're an honest person, you'll meet that. You, you will admit that, right? If you're an honest person, when you read this tweet, you had no idea what the hell he was talking about. I had, I had no idea when I read this tweet what the hell he was talking about. This tweet inspired questions, not answers. First and foremost, right there. What Okay, so here's the deal. Candace, that probably the first time, we agree. We don't know what the hell he's talking about. We never know what the hell he's talking about. We don't know what the hell you talking about. We know what the hell he was talking about talking to Tucker Carlson. We never know what his crazy ass talking about. Why? Because his ass isn't it. Just like you. Now, I can't wait for Ben Shapiro, who is Candace's boss, who's Jewish, who's always commenting on anti-Semitism, cannot wait for him to break down the whole Kanye deal. But the thing I love here, Julian Omakongo and Renita and, and uh, Cleo stay, stay here for this segment, is I love how, oh, Lord, they were holding Kanye West up like he was they Nelson Mandela. <laughs> and then when they sided with a fool, uh, Julian, it was kind of like, uh, oh, it was sort of like that, uh, that, um, that uh, beam from The Simpsons, you know, home up, back into the bush, like, <laughs> what the hell are we thinking? <laughs> That's, they all running now, and trust me, they ain't going to be praising Kanye when he goes full ignorant-ass Kanye. Go ahead. You know, it's hilarious, Roland, because I, I couldn't believe the clips you compiled were these folks who, not that they're bright or anything, but should, should have known better than to praise Kanye to the heavens. All I have to say about him is this. I am certain that his mama is rolling over her grave. She was a serious black woman, academic, taught African-American studies. I'm sure I'm, something happened to him somewhere along the way, perhaps when she, when she passed. But his... No, it wasn't when the boy got a mental... He, he's mentally sick, and we're going to call it what it is, and I guess he's trying to get the, uh, the Mel Gibson Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> for, for insanity? I don't know what the hell he's doing, but I'm going to call it what it is. But what I'm not going to do is call this folk, this fool, his intellectual prowess and all those phrases, them dumbasses that Fox News was throwing around. I mean, the boy done said he don't read books. See, this is what happens when y'all keep calling everybody a genius. Just because your ass make music don't make you a genius. So maybe, now maybe you want to say a musical genius or whatever. Eh, but for me, eh, I don't really give a damn other than probably two or three songs he got, but that's just me. But on the Congo, that's what you're dealing with. He's a fool. And when you see Fox News praising anybody black, we need to have a big old neon, line set, neon sign. Beware! Praise <laughs> of the Negro at Fox News. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, for them, I mean, he, he's the rap version of Herschel Walker, to be quite honest. And really, at the end of the day, what Candace Owens was doing, that was also kind of a CYA moment because she was kind of backtracking because she didn't want that people, she didn't want people coming for her with this anti-Semitic smoke as well. And when you see what's happening with, with Tucker Carlson and all of these guys, they will do anything to pick any one black person Call them a free thinker, call them liberated. Jason Whitlock had that Kunta Kinte comment. And really, at the end of the day, what, what bothers me about a lot of this is the way that Kanye is being shut down for his anti Semitic comments, which he should, but has not gotten the same level 
of, of disdain and being shut down in these spaces like Instagram, Instagram and, and Twitter for his anti-blackness, for, you know, the slavery as a choice, the White Lives Matter shirts and, and, and all of these other types of things. He's been coming at, at us before he was going at, at, at them. And so um, he deserves to get what's happening now. But I wish we would also, in our own community, do a better job of, of, of policing people within our community when they step out of line. And Roland, you, are, you don't care who it is. Obama, Kobe Bryant, uh, LeBron, the same people you praise and when they do right, if they do something that you feel doesn't help the culture, you speak up on it. And more of us need to do that as well. And so I'm, 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 Connie's getting what he deserved now, but quite honestly, it should have happened a lot sooner, in my opinion. Renee, I, I just, I'm just getting a kick again how they are just, uh, I mean, again, treating, treating Kanye West like he is just this unbelievable intellectual force, you know, and then, oh, Jason Whitlock, oh, he is doing these things for the good. Boy, sit your fake ass down. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with Ama Congo, except I do, you know, to me, it, this is hilarious that this has all happened. It's not hilarious what he's putting out there, but it's hilarious how far they went to lift him up as they do anytime they get any black person who is putting out anti-blackness and who is high profile. So, of course, in their minds, for conservative, white conservatives, you know, anybody like a Herman Cain, uh, Ben Carson, um, Candace Owens, any of these people, they're authentic when they are, you know, talking about running down our communities and talking about black people in really negative ways. And so this is just what we've seen as par for the course. But like Amakongo touched on something that was very important, which is that it is very interesting that, you know, with this one tweet, he has been, um, you know, at attacked rightfully so from so many different areas, but he has been putting out constant disinformation and nonsense about black people for quite a long time, dangerous information like, oh, slavery wasn't that bad, uh, things like that, you know, and that was just allowed to go on. And so I just would like to see the same level of outrage um, every time that he is, you know, putting out misinformation. But you know, they wanted him. Black people have been saying that something has not been right with Con Kanye for a while. They wanted him. Now they got him. So they're stuck with him. All right, Cleo, uh, before I go to you, I want to show you uh, this Fox News hopscotch because they were like, oops, oops. <laughs> I mean, so, so what, watch these fools at work. Listen to y'all. It was your Friday night, you, you know, you didn't, you didn't have to get up early, so I assume you stayed up late-ish for you. you. You probably watched Tucker and Hannity, and so that means you probably saw Kanye's interview. What did you think? I, did. I watched the entire interview, and uh, I know that um, I watched part one and part two. Yes, he jumps around a lot, but I do think, I mean, he's not dumb. He's really smart. I thought his message was a spiritual message, really, to embrace who God created you to be. He's not conventional. Uh, he teaches to be to think outside of the box. He gives examples about his children, uh, reject conformity, and be yourself. It's actually a beautiful message. I encourage everyone to really listen to it. Um, he, you know, he'll, he'll focus on one subject and then he'll jump to another subject from running to pres running for president to Elon Musk to his kids and his schools and big pharma uh, and uh, farms and our food. And but it's really if you just watch it and you listen to what he's saying, the message is beautiful. He's saying we're all sheep and uh, we need to be guided by God and and focus on what God created you to be, who you were in the womb, and uh, really embrace those those thoughts and those messages that God has given to you. And, you know, we're all, we're all created uniquely. There are billions of people in this world, and we each have our own fingerprint, which is amazing if you think about it. And we have so much power in our own bodies to make this world a better place. And if we all did that and weren't conformed and were objective about things, instead of just conforming to our schools and conforming to our government, then I think this world would be... Okay, let me tell you, Cleo, Ainsley Earnhardt is truly one of the dumbest people on Fox News. And that's saying a whole lot when you got Peter Hexeth and Janine Pirro and some other uh, uh, just air, you got, you got supreme airhead, uh, Kaylee McEnany, but this child right here, she take the cake for being, I think, uh, the dumbest person at Fox News, but don't you just love how, oh, you thought he was, she was describing Mother Teresa or Jesus. 
Well, there's a few things that are very clear here, and there's some things that are not so clear. What's clear here is that white supremacists, strange people who are believing the myth of that superiority need people like Kanye West. Now, he kind of messed up in their eyes when he jo dropped the J Jewish bomb. They didn't expect that, of course. But what he's you got to remember that bef earlier this week, he and B Candace both w were walking around with a, some, in some fashion show with a White Lives Matter a shirt. That's like, an, an, a, which, what's, what's it called? A, something to act when it's sexually? It's called a, some, the word ends with act. I can't think of the word right now. But anyway, that's like sexually charging to white supremacists when they see black people act like this. You might remember that every now and then they bring, during an election, they bring out Lil Wayne, who has no political analysis, but he's, but he's willing to say something anti-black. And that's, what, that's why he's there, and that's why they love Kanye West. Kanye, they don't even know Kanye's music. They don't even know why he's called a genius. What they're calling genius is that he's willing to be anti-black. And that's the part that's obvious. What's not so obvious, and I've gotten in trouble for saying this, is that, okay, it's easy to get upset and frustrated with the likes of Kanye West and calling him a fool and things like that, but Kanye is a s severely, I think this is true for Candace as well, a profoundly traumatized black man who needs help. He's somebody who's dealing with a lot of deep pain and it's not resolved, therefore he's surviving mental illness in a yes, yes sir situation, meaning everybody says yes to him because he's Kanye and he's rich. But the bottom line is there are some very devastating blows that happened to Kanye that I think we need to take a look at. For example, he tried to show racism in the Republican Party and in the presidency when he said George Bush didn't, didn't like black folks back during... Yeah, so George Bush hates black people. After that, he tried to expose racism in the video, the video award system when what Taylor Smith, I think her name was, got an award that he thought Beyonce should have gotten and that it was racist. And in both instances, when he stepped out from the system and said something for black people, he got crickets. Not only did he get crickets, follow me, the, president, the, black, the first black president of the United States called him a jackass. I believe personally that that, along with his mother dying, were very, very traumatizing and confusing for him. And he finally got to the point of, F y'all, I'm going to go to the other side. And though Obama dissed him, Trump embraced him. And that was his unconscious, unfortunate revenge for having been dissed by the first black president. Now, I'm not justifying nothing. I'm looking at this from a behavioral perspective, and I'll end by saying that calling him names and being mad at him and people like him and Candace and others is not the answer. We need to look at why black people dissolve into this kind of anti-blackness. And there's a reason for everything, and often we don't get into those reasons because we get too upset and judgmental to actually deconstruct that behavior. See, and I, white I, people I, love that behavior. See, what I make clear is I don't feed the beast. Uh, and so the reason I'm, and, and, and again, I, I chose last week not to even deal with him. I did media interviews with The Breakfast Club, other places. Everywhere I went, they asked me about Kanye. I said, I don't give a damn about Kanye. He ain't got no impact on the election. He ain't got no impact on nothing else. I don't give a damn. <laughs> but the reason I'm, sh I'm talking about it this, because I'm trying to show folk what happens when you have white nationals on Fox News mm -hmm. who are, for they, they, they are quick to find uh, a Negro yeah. to say, oh, he won ours. That's why they love him from Jason Whitlock. Yeah. Oh, they love, when you, when you see them over there doing that, that dance and oh my goodness, they in love with him. But I, I want to show you this here because this is from Fox and Friends. Uh, I played a little bit clip, clip earlier. And again, I show how Will, I'm going to show you how Will came. This Ch Rachel uh, Compost Duffy and how Peter Hex said, if y'all want to see how three people utterly embarrass themselves together, okay? If you want to see what standards and so-called journalistic practice, practice looks like at Fox News, y'all going to get a kick out of this one. Watch this. Let's see here. Hold on one second. I'm going to come back to me. I'm going to see if I, can, I had it set up. Because I, when, I, when I saw this story, y'all, when I said I hollered, I'm talking about I hollered because they were having a conversation 
they were having a conversation about uh, the tweets. Uh, but then what happened was they hadn't actually read them. And then they were told, so watch this. Let's see if I can skip this ad. Okay. All right. I'm trying to skip this ad here. Uh, they got all these ads on here. Okay, here we go. Did y'all have it now? The last several years is, um, and I don't know, because I, I haven't seen these posts by Kanye. Yay. Um, y something is, is branded racist or anti-Semitic, you know what I mean? But you never really see the original source material because uh, in a media account of it, they don't repeat whatever it is. Right. It, this, I, it, this is a real trend of the last couple of years where the headline will say a certain thing and then you read the article and, you're, and, and the article is conclusive, meaning it was racist, it was anti-Semitic, but the supporting evidence is never provided. And the only reason I say that is because I don't trust everybody making the calls. I'm not saying yeah. it wasn't anti-Semitic. I don't know because I don't get to see the original source material. It's censored. Okay, y'all. Uh, it was available to be seen. So Will Cain literally went on television to discuss a topic and then said, oh, I didn't see it, but I'm about to opine on it and it's wrong, it got taken down, although I never saw it. Okay. Not uh, they, I think that the new journalistic standard is don't repeat it if it is considered racist or anti-Semitic or whatever it may be. So therefore, just as a consumer, you don't ever, you, you don't just have to, to the trust judgment. the storyteller. Yeah. You don't actually get to see the story. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. This fool just said, sorry, y'all, I ain't read the tweet. But I'm discussing the tweet I haven't read. And then it's a shame because when the media talks about it, they never actually show you what he said. Your ass media! You're literally on the number one cable news network, news in quotation marks. You are media. And you're like, uh, the media doesn't show. Y'all not showing it. Will Kane, oh my God. Dude, do you know how stupid you sound? You literally sound like an idiot discussing a post and you go, I haven't read it. But it's a shame where we talk about things and the media never shows it. Y'all don't show it. Let me play the rest of this stupidity. Question that Kanye or Ye was going to have to be taken down after what happened in the Tucker Carlson interview after wearing that shirt. Um, he just crossed every line that you're not allowed to cross. And he exposed BLM. Um, for its corruption. He talked about pro-life issues. He has to be taken down. My understanding, Will, of what he said is that he claimed that his buddy P. Diddy, who you saw there in the Instagram post, was being controlled by uh, Jewish, you know, corporate, corporate Hollywood types. That was what I understand what was the statement, mm. um, which then they said was anti-Semitic and, you know, referenced some tropes. And so then they had to cut him down. Again, we're in this weird era where people can't just say what they want to say and, and, and take responsibility, you know, for what they said, whether it's with the sale of his shirts or his companies, or whatever. But this idea that you have to just shut down his account mm -hmm. um, is just, it's totally totalitarian, totally anti-American. Um, and oh, oh, I, I mean, oh, oh my God, I'm just so sorry that people just can't say what the hell they want to say. I mean, look, they just want to call you the N-word, call you the K-word, call you the B-word, call, uh, call you whatever you want. Look, I don't understand why can't people just say what they want to say and then they just sort of take their responsibility of it. But how, how dare they take doll something they might consider to be racist? Oh, my God. What in the world must be done? What must we do? Oh, I'm sorry. Were there any Fox News people who were fired for, you know, sending you know, pick, pics of their penis around. I don't know. Eric Bowling. I don't know. Ed Henry got fired for sexual impropriety. I don't know, Bill O'Reilly. Uh, I mean, we can keep going. Uh, I, 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 were there any Fox News people who made racist comments and then they no longer employ it there? Yeah, I think so. 
Wasn't Bob Beckel, did he make some sort of racial comment and got taken off the air and got fired? Yeah, I, I think that's what happened to him. So I, I'm, I'm confused, um, Rachel, what the hell you're talking about. Okay, let me, let me show the rest of this stupidity. Okay, here we go. It, it, it's just wrong. I, I don't know what he said. Maybe it was... Uh, that's what an, I understand. ...anti-Semitic. Uh, you should clear you know, that up, though. Listen, I'm no... Wow, okay. Um, Peter Hedge said, I don't know what he said. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm talking about something. I don't know what he said. Then she goes, uh, maybe we should clear that up. Wow, that's a novel ass idea. Why don't we actually show what he said? What? I, we might want to clear that up because I mean I don't know what the hell he said. But right now I'm about to talk about what the hell he said. Although I haven't read what he said, and I'm sitting here on a national television show. Uh, listen to talking to people about something. I have no idea what he said, but what the hell, I'm going to tell you all my feelings anyway. Sure, Peter, go ahead and take it away. Of course. But the question you have to ask yourself is, would he have been restricted on Instagram if he hadn't given the Tucker Carlson interview? So what happens is he gives the interview, speaks out, immediately there must be a full accounting of everything he said recently looking for an opportunity to silence the guy who just spoke out. If he okay, hadn't given so, that interview, so, it's probably not. No, keep going, keep going. He exactly. did, the they looked for the him. crime. The, target, the, 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 the target's over him. Correct. No, the clip literally that said nothing about Tucker Carlson, but their whole deal is, oh my God, I mean, it was all because of Tucker. It's the power of Tucker. What in the world is going on? It's Tucker, Tucker, Tucker. They must take him down because he talked to Tucker. The, these people are literal idiots. Okay, real, real quick, uh, 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 a f fire round, fire response. Uh, Cleo, you go first. I think they're strategists. You call them idiots, but Kanye is a part of a strategy to create confusion among black people. He's physically black, and he speaks in ways that does not defy racism, the problem of white supremacy mythology, and all of this stuff is orchestrated by white folks. When we're mad at Kanye, but the reason we know Kanye exists is because white people have given him a, him a platform perpetually because he feeds into whether he knows it or not. And I don't think he does. I don't think he, I think he is confused and everything. And he loves the attention, so he's not, he doesn't have a critical analysis of why they keep calling me. He just takes advantage of being called and is enjoying the, the spotlight. But he is indeed part of a strategy. And those people you're calling idiots who are not making any sense, who are not walk, walk, watching these shows, but who have a huge platform, are all strategists for the perpetuation of white control. But I have a question, if you don't mind. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Before you ask the question, now I showed y'all the conversation before. Then they found out what he said. Somebody went, Psst. uh, <laughs> here it is. Watch the flip. This, uh, Ye West threatening to go to war with Jewish people on Twitter. So these shocking remarks come after he appears to imply Diddy, a fellow rapper, was controlled by the Jews on Instagram. Now that account, his Instagram account, has been restricted. Alexandria Hoff joins us with more on this story. Alexandra, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we wanted to make sure we confirmed all of this. The Instagram restriction came first, and it appears to have stemmed from a series of screenshots showing a text exchange between Ye and Sean Diddy Wait, Combs. The two had been disagreeing on Ye's wearing of a White Lives Matter shirt during a fashion show in Paris last week. The convo contained language by Ye that social media users and the American Jewish Committee called out as anti-Semitic. Instagram has taken down Ye's post and temporarily restricted his ability to share and comment. Now, from there, Ye Ye took to Twitter for the first time since 2020, where he called out Instagram chair and Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, writing, look at this, Mark, how are you going to kick me off Instagram? And then continued with another anti-Jewish statement. The tweet has since been deleted by the company for violating Twitter's rules. We reached out for confirmation of that. But the Times of Israel and the Daily Mail shared it. It read, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. The funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Now, that was followed by another tweet, quote, who you think created 
cancel culture. And that second tweet, it does remain up. It's unclear right now how long Ye's Instagram will remain restricted. The American Jewish Committee shared on their Instagram account, writing, quote, Kanye West should figure out how to make a point without using anti-Semitism. Well, Rachel Pete. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Alexander. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, unfortunate. I mean, there's no. Pretty ugly. It's ugly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but um, we talked about it earlier without yeah. knowing about these tweets and saying, of course, they're going to put a target after what he said with Tucker. There's going to be a target on him, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But in this particular case, I mean, he brought the target. With, yeah. With that. And then the question is, should he be removed from Instagram and who gets to decide that um, or, or, or Facebook or whatever? And I think that's the question, not just about Kanye, about everybody. Um, you know, what are the standards? Who sets the standards? Yeah. And, how, and how is social media um, being monitored? And one could argue if you are really interested in exposing and diminishing racism or anti-Semitism in the world, that you're better off knowing that it exists. And if we pursue a policy or a culture in the world where we constantly silence, censor, and cancel, you don't know what exists underneath the surface. Mm, that's a good point. So to your point, Rachel, condemnable sentiments from Kanye West what is the appropriate reaction, meaning is censorship and silence the appropriate reaction to actually accomplish a goal? I, I, I can't listen to this bullshit anymore. Y'all y'all saw how that shift? Oh, my God. These, oh, I'm, oh, my goodness. You, you saw how the tone shifted? Uh, right now, let's go to breaking news. Uh, we've actually discovered what Kanye said. We looked like complete assholes a little bit earlier, so therefore I must change the tone in my voice because now this thing is a lot more serious than I thought. A little bit earlier, I was playing around, joking around, just sort of like being flippant about it. But oh my goodness, I saw what he said. Jesus, my goodness, what are my Jewish friends and colleagues going to say now? Because I look like an asshole defending him just 30 minutes earlier because I was too stupid to go on the air to actually read the stuff first. Now, my goodness, I mean, I don't, I mean, the things that he said, that was just, I can't believe it. I mean, my goodness, what, you know, you know, we thought he was, they were going to take him down because of Tucker, but looks like he just sort of took himself down. <laughs> I told y'all, these are ignorant people, and yes, Cleo is right, it is by design how they are appealing to their white audience, but you see what happens, you saw in real time how Fox News will go on the air, no facts, no, bat, no information, check nothing, and then opine and trash everybody as being wrong and then go, oh my goodness, look what the fool said. Now we must change our tone because now this thing is serious. Cleo, go ahead. Well, another thing that occurred though during that excerpt that you just played is that they were trying to still save Kanye. They call, yep. him, they call him Ye, which I'm like, yay, okay. Anyway, because they know Kanye, they love him. He's Ye, like Cher, and, you know, is one word. Anyway. They were trying to still save him because there's, there's some anti-Semitism, frankly, in, the, in these systems as well, along with the white supremacy mythology and insanity. So they didn't want to throw him all, all, completely under the bus. They said stuff like, well, who has the right to cancel his voice? Anyway, what I was going to ask, though, before, this occur before we went there was that, is there a Latino, white, gay, Asian, or white, lesbian equivalent in popular culture to Kanye West? Well, first of all, I mean, you do have white artists, you've got gay artists, you've got Latino artists. So, but- I know, but the, but the equivalent- well, First of all, when you say equivalent, you got somebody who's, who's in music, he was married to a Kardashian, he's got fashion lines. So, I mean, I mean so that's, you, well, it's well, not a comparison. But, they will bring in Lil Wayne with no record, with no record on, the, on the charts again, or, or no, nothing. But again, but, but you understand what agenda is. I mean, that's, but yeah. you know exactly what their agenda is. The thing here, Omicongo, <laughs> that jumps out at me, you saw how they, they oh, oh my goodness, I mean, we look like fools. This is what happens when you go on air, no one will tell you talk about it. <laughs> All they had to do was lead with that woman who brought in the actual tweet and their whole, they would, their whole conversation would have been different, but they can't help who they are. And this is the same thing that our Republican Congress folks do whenever a comment's made, oh, I haven't read the transcript, or oh, I haven't said it. Then when they get exposed <laughs> to it, they say, oh, maybe I would have said it differently. This proves full stop that Fox is, we all know this, so people need to be reminded that Fox is not a media organization. They are media personalities, but they are not journalists. That's and right. for them to sit there and, and act like, 
oh my gosh, this is this is just someone's free speech and so on and so forth. But let us be reminded that black people and Jewish people, black people number one and Jewish people number two, are consistently the number one and two targets for hate crimes in this country. At, and it has been on the rise over 200 percent over the last five years yep. at different points. So these words matter. And you have to call it out when you see it. And you got to do your research, number one network out there. So I'm glad they got exposed like that. But people need to start calling them out just as much as we're calling yep. out Ye because they gave him a platform to spread that ignorance. And what they tried to do there, Renita, really, is to make it all about Tucker Carlson, which is all about themselves, serving, serving their self-serving interests. But no, he was the fool who made the comments. Uh, and yeah, Tucker's been real quiet over the weekend on his Twitter feed uh, because, uh, yeah, see what happens when you talk to yay? Yeah. And then now he's nay. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? The thing is, is that anti-Semitism is rampant on the right. And they agree with the values of anti-Semitism, but they can't say it because white That's supremacy right. knows today that they have got to keep every white looking person, white adjacent person, anybody who's willing to roll around in white supremacy, they need all the numbers That's because right. others like, you know, black and brown folks have, um, we are outnumbering them. And so they're trying to keep every single bit of everybody that they can, even if they have to take a mini break away from that person. But the other panelist was asking about examples in other communities. This is what Republicans do and conservatives do and white supremacy does in general. Yeah, there are plenty of examples. They will get anybody who is willing to disparage a community that they have systematically attacked. So as somebody who is both queer and black myself, I can tell you that they uh, regularly pull up Caitlyn Jenner to talk about transgender folks. They regularly, uh, Herschel Walker's son, I mean, had you seen his videos before he came out and blasted his dad? He was talking all about how we don't need Juneteenth and black people should just stick with the 4th of July. Um, he regularly talks about how we don't need gay pride and how that, that should just be abolished. So they're good at collecting folks from various different communities who will basically stand up and say, no, conservatives are not racist. No, they are not anti-LGBTQ. No, they are not anti-Semitic. No, they are not. Whatever, whatever type of shield they need, they have plenty of folks who are willing to do it for them. And Kanye and Candace are just the two that they're using right now. Julian, mm -hmm. final comment real quick. Sure. I, I mean, I think that I agree with Cleo that this is all about strategy and about ways to get the black pe get black people at each other. I've discussed it with Kanye West, but I've been discussing it with him for a long time. With that fact that Fox News, Mr. Bojangles rap of, OK, I'm going forward, I'm going back. They've already indicted themselves. Most of us don't pay them any mind. Candace Owens needs to be put up somewhere because what she said was silly. It was really silly. It made no sense at all. But this whole thing at some level makes no sense and is silly. We look at the state of black America, the state of, state of us in this economy. Why are we talking about Kanye West? Well, here's the deal. Again, the issue right here is not a question with Kanye. It's understanding the folks who want to harm black people, who they want to amplify and promote as being intellectually, having intellectual prowess, and somehow let's listen to them and that's why I keep trying to tell people it's a danger when you listen to fools uh, be just because they are entertainer. No, it's a whole bunch of entertainers out there who are actually informed, a Jesse Williams, someone along those lines. I have never, never, ever looked to Kanye West for any critical thought on a damn thing, and never will. All right, folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us, growing creating, making moves that move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Black Power. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. Hey, Black, I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 